I got into some fights on the internet with middle-aged women about it. Oh, hey, hi, oh, hello. I am in a very different place this time, um, mentally as well. We're not going to go into that, though. This is my bookshelf, uh, singular. I see a lot of YouTubers talking about books and stuff where they're on like they've got like two whole walls of bookshelves to dream to dream I would absolutely love that this is all I have real estate for so um yeah that and my lovely cat tree <laughs> that my cats don't use except as a ladder to get into the window I'm not bitter so today I wanted to do a bookshelf tour but not my bookshelf not my physical bookshelf I wanted to do an audio bookshelf tour because what I have found over the past year is that I have gone absolutely crazy for audiobooks. Never thought I would be that person. I was a very bratty, conceited, stuck up teenager who thought that audiobooks weren't real reading. I got into some fights on the internet with middle aged women about it, and frankly, I was in the wrong. I was absolutely 100% wrong. I'm sorry that it took me so long to realize that. I'm sorry that it took me depending on audiobooks to see their value. Um, I shouldn't have to personally experience something to think it's valuable. Um, so that that is uh, that is some growing that I had to do. I love audiobooks now. I absolutely adore them. And I regret and I'm very sorry that I ever looked down on them or looked down on anyone who read them, enjoyed them, relied on them, to, to that specific middle-aged woman who I have no idea who she is or where she is, but uh, I'm sorry. I was a brat. I was a brat and I was picking fights on the internet for absolutely no reason. And you were 100% right and I am sorry. So anyway, I decided what I wanted to do is do an audio bookshelf tour because I it is probably at this point close to my actual physical bookshelf as far as um, quality books. The shelf on the bottom doesn't really have books on it. It has like binders and my sketchbook and colored pencils and things for my artistic endeavors that I can't make myself stick to and I revisit once every five years or so. Um, and then I have kind of some nonfiction self-helps, very specific for dummies things, and some, some other books on the second to the last shelf, books that like I own but I will probably never read, I don't have a ton of interest in, and then one, two, I have, I basically have three shelves of books, like my books either I've read or I really want to read. Um, so there's not a lot there for a tour. So instead, I want to do my um, audiobook tour. So this will encompass my Chirp bookshelves, which is all of the audiobooks that I purchased myself. Um, it will be my Audible bookshelf because I did sign up for a subscription to Audible and I have pulled some titles. There's not a lot. Um, and I might go through Libby. I'm going to go through Libby. Um, because I have actually found quite a lot of books on Libby. A few of them I actually enjoyed so much that I purchased physical copies or I purchased audiobook copies or both in the case of Circe because I love that book so much. Let's check out my audiobook library. Okay, so I'm going to open up Chirp and you can see at the top there are different tabs for all which is obviously everything you have there's unread which is everything that is not finished and then there's actively in progress so i have two and then there is finished which you can see the ratings that you've left if you left a rating so we'll start out with all and the first one that i have the big book of adventures which is just a collection of stories from different adventure writers including jack london and others then you will see the chronicles of narnia by c.s lewis i'm 52 percent of the way through and that is because this is every single book in the chronicles series and i have finished the first like three or four um i still need to read the last i think it's three books left starting with the voyage of the dawn treader that's right so i still have to get through voyage of the dawn treader silver chair and i think the final battle or something the last battle so 
that is where I'm at with my Chronicles of Narnia series. Um, then I have Classic Tales of Horror by collected authors Edgar Allan Poe, Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson, and H.G. Wells, uh, which I have listened to, I think almost, I think I've listened to the entire thing. Um, All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. And what I'm going to do is for books that are not super well known, or at least that I don't see that people seem to talk about that much on BookTube or Goodreads, um, I will open up the synopsis, um, but I'm not going to stay very long on the synopsis. So if any of these look interesting to you, pause the video so that you can read the synopsis on screen. Grief and loss along with the loss of self, the loss of your memory, the loss of your identity because you're losing your memory um, is really interesting. So I'm curious to see how this goes. And I have Liberty by Caitlin Greenridge. And this is uh, based on one of the first female black doctors in the United States. Um, this girl is growing up, her mother is a doctor and she is expected to become a doctor, but she actually wants to pursue art for her life and so she has to deal with um, the expectations of her mother, she has to deal with the expectations of um, uh, the man that she ends up marrying and trying to find her own identity and her own purpose. Nobody's Magic by Destiny O. Birdsong is the story of three different um, black women who all suffer from albinism and it follows each of their individual stories and their place in the world as they deal with being a black woman whose skin is not at all like the skin of you know the, the rest of the people in her community and each of them has different challenges and different strengths different um, things that they have to suffer through um, and rise above Small Flanders by Daniel Defoe, classic novel, Oblomov by Ivan Goncharov, another classic. Um, the Book of Night Women I got recently, this was on sale, I think as part of um, February Black History Month in the United States. Um, this is a story of a woman who seems to possibly be the salvation of a bunch of other enslaved people, but she has to decide if that's what she wants her life to end up becoming. Kazuo Ishiguro, When We Were Orphans, kind of a detective story, grief, loss, and memory again. Um, Sparkling Cyanide by Agatha Christie. Class of Black Narratives, this came up on sale. This has 12 Years a Slave, The Souls of Black Folk, The Interesting Narrative of the Life of Oluwado Ekwayano. Um, each of these is by different authors, and then the autobiography of an ex-colored man. Um, the story of a black man who can pass as white and what he chooses to do with um, that ability to shift identities. The Street by Anne Petrie. Um, this, I think, is based on a true story. 
one of the um, first African-American women to um, sell more than a million copies in uh, the book that she wrote. Evil Genius by Wilkie Collins, I think is another classic. This deals with um, infidelity, broken trust, um, finding new friendships, new relationships, new, new purpose in life, but then uh, in a in a interesting family dynamic, one of them being evil and you kind of figuring it out as the story goes, which one that is. Uh, Snow Falling on Cedars I also picked up very recently. I, I knew the name of this book very well. I never really knew the plot. And when I saw the synopsis that it was a Japanese-American man standing trial uh, for murder that he probably didn't commit around the time of the Japanese internment camps. Very interesting. Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. I actually have The Poppy Wars through Audible. Um, but the second book was on sale here, so I picked it up because it was going to be like super cheap. And that way I wouldn't have to use an audible credit. The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway, another classic. Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueko. Um, this is a pretty popular one. Uh, Day Zero by C. Robert Cargill. Um, this is basically about kind of a nanny robot AI who is present during a kind of robot uprising and he has to determine if his purpose is to join the robots or if his purpose is to fulfill what he was built for which is to protect a young boy um, and keep him safe throughout this uh, mechanism me uh, mechanical uprising the narrative of arthur gordon pym which is i think edgar Allan poe's only novel and i've read it before absolutely loved it how High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. That's a very popular one. Um, the Story Hour by Thriti Umregar. Um, um, Hope I'm not pronouncing that too badly. Um, this is interesting. A therapist ends up um, forming an inappropriately close bond with one of her patients, becoming really entwined in this person's life and very close friends, um, talking about boundaries and where that's appropriate, where that's not. Um, to build a ja uh, to build a Jack London to build a fire by Jack London a survival story in the Yukon I love Jack London's writing in White Fang and Call of the Wild the precious jewels a child is beyond what their parents can deal with and so they end up um, basically putting them in an institution and then they get out as an adult and how the family deals with this person that they really don't know. Um, Atlas Shrugged, Fountainhead, We the Living, I love Ayn Rand, Don't Come For Me. I don't agree with her on a lot of her stuff. I just really like her writing, and I find her stories um, very enthralling. The Postman Always Rings Twice by James Kane. I know this from a very old movie. I did not realize this was a book. So um, when I saw this come up, I was like, yes, I want to see what this is about. Um, interested in the noir aspect of old films and novels. Every Shade of Happy was just a random one that came up. This sounds so cute. This grumpy old man has to take in his um, daughter and her daughter, so his granddaughter, and he's an old grumpy man and she's a young grumpy teenager and they end up forming a very close bond when they realize how much they have in common, how lonely they both are. That just sounded charming. Surface Where You Find It by Jerry Lopez. I actually completed that. Um, I really liked it. The Dutch House by Anne Pratchett. Narrated by Tom Hanks. It's narrated by Tom Hanks. I don't care what this book is about. I'm going to get it. Um, but no, the story actually did sound pretty interesting. Two siblings are sort of disinherited um, from a wealthy, from their wealthy parents, and they end up having to kind of support each other through life and make their own way. Moving away, downtown. Uh, Zulika. Uh, this was a completely random one that popped up that sounded interesting. Um, a woman is uh, dealing with the, the results of communism in Siberia, and it's based on her grandmother's childhood stories. 
a bunch of Agatha Christie and ABC murders, the murders of the vicarage, the secret adversary, and N or M, the big four, all Agatha Christie novels. I have The Old Maid by Edith Wharton. I wanted really anything by Edith Wharton. That was on sale. Uh, Warriors, Witches, and Women. This is talking about the female characters in different mythologies who've been sort of villainized and looking at them in a different light. And I thought that was really interesting. I really enjoyed Circe. I really was interested in some of the other um, female characters through or female mythology um, that it talks about. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. This was um, the same guy who wrote A Man Called Ove, or Ove, um, which I think is very popular. And this basically is once her grandmother dies, she gets a bunch of letters that her grandmother wrote for her to deliver, where her grandmother is just apologizing for things that she's done to people throughout her whole life. Uh, Mythos by Stephen Fry. I feel like that one's pretty popular. A lot of people know that one. A Day Late and a Dollar Short by Terry McMillan. Kind of just a family story, a matriarchal family, and how they deal with, you know, life over the years. An Indiscreet Princess. Um, this is, I think, one of Queen Victoria's siblings and how she didn't really want to deal with the royal life and she wanted adventure and she wanted autonomy and she wanted independence. So this is kind of her story. The Princess of Mars. This is basically the movie John Carter um, that is based on this book. And that movie I saw randomly one day and it was, it was okay. Um, and this is the same author who actually created uh, Tarzan. So I guess I will pick that up. Bound for the Promised Land. This is a um, biography of Harriet Tubman. And the, the synopsis points out that a lot of books about Harriet Tubman are actually made for very young readers. There's not a lot of biographies about her written for adults. And so I was really interested to pick this one up. Despair by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, Another classic, The Way of All Flesh, Samuel Butler, another classic. Stardust by Neil Gaiman that I actually just finished in Libby because I forgot I bought it. Um, a House Without Windows by Nidia Hashimi. Um, a woman is accused of murdering her husband even though she claims that it wasn't her. And she ends up becoming imprisoned with uh, a number of other uh, women. And they kind of tell each other their stories, they bond, and they end up being represented by an American-educated uh, Afghan-born attorney who wants to help and, and get them their justice. The Adolescent by Fyodor Dostoevsky, classic Genius and the Goddess by Aldous Huxley, classic Babel. There are a million people who you can find out what Babel is about if you haven't heard of it yet. Um, another story by James Kane, The Cocktail Waitress. I think this one was not actually published until recently, even though he wrote it uh, a number of years ago. So again, it's one of those like noir novels that I was interested in just picking up. The Moon Maze Game. Um, this is me trying to get back more into sci-fi and the cover of that just looked so cool. Um, so it's in the future, but not too distant. It's 2085 and there is a LARPing, a LARP game that you kind of have to play for survival. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Sci-fi, LARP for survival? Yes. The Warden by Anthony Trollope. Classic. A Tale for the Time Being. Again, another very popular one. A lot of booktube talks about it. The King in Yellow. I forget where I came across this, um, but when it came up on sale, I wanted to grab it. Very Lovecraftian is how it's described. Um, and that the book itself can make you go crazy, and that's part of the story. A Nancy Blaze by Neil Gaiman. I am really enjoying anything by Neil Gaiman. The Good Wife of Bath. I picked this up because I was kind of looking for something that kind of vibed like Circe and um, the Women of Troy. And even though this is based in um, England, it kind of had that same sort of mythological fairy tale. Another Agatha Christie, some Sherlock Holmes. 
Nordic Tales, which is just a collection of folk Nordic fairy tales, and I adored it. Highly recommend this audiobook. It has multiple narrators, charming fairy tales. The narrators are fantastic, every single one of them. And then finally, All the Old Knives, which is also a Amazon Prime movie now. And this one was okay. Um, I thought the narrators did a good job, but this is basically two CIA operatives just trying to figure out who was the inside man in a terrorist attack from a number of years ago. All right, so here I want to show you my stats. If you look, you can see in the past seven days, I have saved $145.92. In 30 days, I have saved $425.85. This is comparing full price audiobooks to how much I saved by buying them on sale. You guys, my 12 months, and I haven't even been buying them in 12 months. You can see my first purchase was in July. From July to February now, I could have spent, if I had purchased everything full price, almost $1,500. And this is what I've saved. So this does not actually include how much I paid for audiobooks and in Chirp I pay anywhere between a dollar and five dollars. $1,500 in savings because of this app. I'm, I'm addicted. I, I'm not going to call it a problem. It's not a problem. It's a solution. So now I'm going to check out Libby. So you can see I created a few different tags, basically eBooks versus audiobooks. Completed Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy, adored it. Peach, Bo Peach Blossom Spring, I just finished, it was fantastic. Um, My Sister the Serial Killer was very good. The Nickel Boys, Counterfeit, um, White Fragility, which you'll actually see again in Audible because I ended up purchasing it after I listened to it. A Mercy by Toni Morrison, Napoli Ever After, which I really, really liked. Um, How to Stop Time by Matt Haggins, okay. I've got some Arthur Conan Doyle. Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, which was my favorite book in high school. And then you can see I have a bunch of Toni Morrison. I can't wait to get to all of her stuff that I can get my hands on. Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I think it's the newest one. So you want to talk about race. Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, the Dark Forest and Death's End are part of the Three Body Problem trilogy. Watership Down, I cannot wait to get to. Uh, Drag Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, I'm still waiting for them to actually get. Ariadne, and then I'm trying to vibe again with Circe. The Starless Sea, Devil House, which is written like it's a true story, but it's not. Stardust by Neil Gaiman. The Circle, I know it's kind of controversial as far as people thinking it's overrated, but I still want to read it. Um, the Astonishing Color of After, The Three Body Problem, a lot of people have heard of that one in the science fiction community. Very excited to read that one. Scarlet Pimpernel. The Remains of the Day, Kazuo Ishiguro again. I'm going to read a lot of his stuff. Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Very well known. When We Fell Apart. There, There. The Last Days of the Ptolemy Gray. Um, Jackal, I don't know if I'm going to actually read. I was very excited to read it. And then I, I've seen some reviews and eh, some mixed mixed reviews on that. Killers of a Certain Age sounds like Red, the movie with Bruce Willis. And I really want to read that. Um, Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng, The Making of Asian America by Erica Lee. That is obviously a nonfiction. Um, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. Cannot wait to grab that one. Everything I told I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, Thunderstruck by Eric Larson, who I think wrote Devil in the White City, which is really good. 
Eagle and the Mask, um, and then a bunch of David Mitchell, Utopia Avenue, Cloud Atlas, The Bone Clocks, and you can tell I'm listening to Cloud Atlas right now. Um, Take My Hand, The Measure, I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. Uh, the Woman in the Library, I've also heard mixed reviews on, but I figured I'd leave it on there. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, I cannot wait to get to. A Book of Cold Cases, Maybe in Another Life. I don't know if I'm going to leave that one on there. I, I'm not I'm not really a big fan of Taylor Jenkins' read. Um, Fairy Tale by Stephen King and The Stand by Stephen King. He's pretty controversial lately, but I do like his writing. Um, the Midnight Library, I've heard mixed things about, but... Eh, everything I've read by Matt Haig is at least a three star. It's decent. Paradise Lost by John Milton. I absolutely want to read. God Help the Child by Toni Morrison again. And then the last one is My Dark Vanessa, which I have heard is absolutely gutting, but also fantastically written. So I cannot wait to check that one out. And then finally, let's take a look at my Audible collection. So I have White Fragility, which I mentioned that I, after I read it in Libby, I picked it up here because it was so good. I have all three of the um, Lord of the Rings series read by Andy Serkis because I was like, Gollum is going to read the Lord of the Rings trilogy to me? Yes. Yes, please. Thank you. The Birth of Venus is a book I was actually, I don't know if it's the book I'm looking for, but it's the only one I could find that kind of matched, so I got it to see if it's the book that I've been trying to find for a few years. The Poppy War by R. F. Quam, um, Atonement. Um, William Shakespeare Comedies, Tragedies, History and Tragedies is a nonfiction, just kind of like an educational look into Shakespeare. Tomorrow, I don't remember what that's about, but I remember really liking the synopsis. The Good Son, which is kind of a thriller mystery, I think, by Yi Jong Jong. Uh, Women Talking by Miriam Toes, that is a movie that's coming out, but I want to read the book first. Um, the Sandman by Neil Gaiman. This one I'm super interested in because it's like a full cast production. And I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere in there that Arthur Darvill is one of the voices too. I, I adore him. Um, but there's also Neil Gaiman, who I like his readings of his own works, James McAvoy, Andy Serkis. So super excited about that. Um, Maggie Gyllenhaal reading Anna Karenina. I have the Count of Monte Cristo, obviously. It was like the first audiobook I purchased in Audible. Um, and a bunch of these are, are free. So War and Peace, Tale of Two Cities, um, The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, I purchased. The Brothers Karamazov, I believe was free. The Journal of the Plague Year by Daniel Defoe was free. Um, the River Swimmer I had an interesting synopsis and it's set in Michigan, so I'm going to get it. <laughs> Utopia, the Sir Thomas More was free. Um, the Greek Coffin Mystery I did purchase. That sounded really interesting. Um, Lady Susan by Jane Austen. And then Moriarty, it's like a podcast, and it's read by Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd. Mary and Pippin are sh like in Sherlock and Moriarty. Like, of course I want this. And then I have the collected Sherlock Holmes stories read by Stephen Fry, and absolutely am loving that. So that is my Audible collection. I also have one audiobook in my nook, which is Benedict Cumberbatch reading uh, a new Sherlock Holmes series and like of course of course I'm gonna pick that up it's Sherlock reading Sherlock to me so thank you so much for checking out my audiobook shelves with me I hope you enjoyed I hope you find something interesting if you did leave me a comment let me know what you liked and let me know what you've read and I will see you soon bye